Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy, gaming, and in this episode, uh, we have a big old batch of produce uh, for us to take to market. And I've also added a few more mods, so we'll talk about those. And we're also going to advance time to November 1st, because it still looks like I logged out uh, during October 3rd. So let's talk about the mods first. Uh, so I'm going to go into, actually, I guess I have to exit the game to show the mods. So let's do that first. Now, <clears throat> I know I told you guys several episodes ago that I wasn't going to do a lot of mods for my first time playthrough, but I have changed my mind about that. And the reason for that is because there's just so many good mods available that, that make the game more realistic, their quality of life types of mods, they add, you know, more options. And I just, you know, I, I changed my mind <laughs> about that because I can't resist, uh, you know, taking advantage of that stuff. So hopefully that is okay with everybody, uh, but it's just the way that it is. Okay, so let's take a look and see what mods we have installed, and I'll talk about uh, those. These are, no, wait, sorry. I have to actually go into here. Okay. So some of these I've already discussed, uh, but uh, so we already have the American Farm Buildings Pack, which we haven't done anything with yet, but probably will later on. That just gives us more buildings uh, to choose from. Uh, I'm, I'm adding bale storages. Uh, so this gives us a, a little storage shed that we can store bales in uh, because I do plan to no longer sell my silage uh, as soon as I harvest it. We're going to we're going to start until the you know, the best month to sell, which uh, typically is January. Uh, and remember, all this stuff costs money, and none, none of this is for free, so it's not like I'm cheating or anything like that. We're just adding more functionality to the game. You already know I got better contracts. You already know I have this little bale clamp thingamadoodle. I've added easy development controls. Now, basically, this gives me all kinds of admin uh, types of tools. I'm going to be using this on my multiplayer server, but I'll also use it for various things on the single-player game. Um, but I'm not going to abuse this tool um, because, you know, I she, if I cheat in my single player game, I spoil the game for myself. I mean, that's the bottom line. But there are certain things that this is going to be really useful for, um, even in the single player game. Like, for example, we have that shed on the back of our property that's just there. We can't do anything with it. Well, this will allow me to remove that, but we'll probably do a role play where we'll have Larry's landscaping come in and remove it or something like that. Uh, you already know I got the roller. I have we've installed farmhouses, field creator. Um, why do I have that again? I can't remember. <laughs> what does field creator do? Uh, I'll have to look at that. Uh, I added a field service trailer. So this this basically will bring fuel um, out to your machinery out on the field to refuel, and it'll also let you repair them. So it's like a, a mobile tool station. And again, it costs money. It's not that's not for free. Uh, I have some logging stuff in here that I use in the multiplayer game. I'm not really doing logging in the single player. Um, we you know we have the the uh, modded pressure washer, the hydroponics. I added a mod that will allow us to increase the range of the lights when we're working at night because, you know, we did all of that sugar beet harvesting at night, and uh, I don't think this is cheaty or unrealistic. Um, so, yeah, that just gives us more light. You know that I've already added the Asarius uh, thing, uh, planter, sorry, or cedar. Uh, I have added the John Deere uh, gator and attachment, but I haven't done anything with that yet. Uh, this was This is for logging for the multiplayer a game I'm not using it in single player. You know I've added the tanks, the stone picker. Lumberjack is added again for the multiplayer server. Um this just makes cutting, you know, trees a lot easier. I know it has a super strength component, but then again, so does this. Uh but I don't, you know, I don't abuse that. I just use it because it makes the cu actual cutting of the trees easier. Now here's a cool one that I've I've added. Uh, I play um Gold Rush 2. And in Gold Rush, you have to get out of your vehicle and you have to attach, you know, your trailer or whatever it is uh, to the vehicle. Well, this is going to make me do that in Farming Sim too. So I'm no longer going to be able to magically back up, uh, you know, to a trailer and just have it pop in. So that's cool. That's going to make things more realistic. Uh, this allows you to measure stuff, uh, particularly useful for cutting logs to length. You already know I have paint and terraform anywhere. This is basically allows us to do Larry's landscape service. I, I was using power tools on the the multiplayer server it's 
some simple admin tools, but this pretty much you know uh, replaces it. So Power Tools is disabled. This rake is worthless. Couldn't figure it out. Haven't investigated any further. Uh, sawmills pack. That's all for multiplayer stuff. Sleep anywhere, of course. We've been using that for a long time. Uh, we did the small silo set. Uh, you guys recommended in the comments to do store deliveries. Now this is really cool because what this will basically do is it'll deliver anything I buy or lease from the store uh, to wherever I tell it to for a fee. So here again, it's not cheaty. I have to pay for it. It's as if I bought something from the store. They ha and they deliver it and they charge a fee. So very very fair, very useful. And let's see, the rest of this stuff is for, well, we, you know, we have the toolbox. This is like a, a, a tractor attachment for log processing. Use that on the multiplayer server. We have the workshop mod, which is also included in the American Farm Buildings pack, but we haven't used it yet. And then I also um, looked at this mod. Uh, what this allows you to do is this actually allows you to set up um, a delivery service to deliver your product. So remember how I was just having the game auto sell? Well, this, this is kind of that idea, except for it's a lot more sophisticated um, and you know, more controllable and you can set parameters and things like that. I don't have it enabled right now, but I might, I might use that later on. Uh, we'll have to see. Okay. So, oh, I know what this is. Field creator. Yeah. This is those extra things where it allows like, um, uh, subsoilers, you know, like that subsoiler we use to create fields. So that's what that is. I, I just, I forgot what it was for a second. Okay. So those are all the bonds that we have. And uh, yeah, I may add more as time goes on. It just depends upon what it is and how I feel it will enhance, uh, you know, the gameplay and our series here. But here, here again, you know, the admin tool stuff I'm, I'm using for realistic reasons or to fix issues, that sort of thing. I'm not using it to cheat because the minute I do that, I'm going to spoil the game for myself. Uh, so you'll just have to trust me on that one. And remember, I also use that stuff on the multiplayer server too, because I am the admin and owner of that server. So that's a whole different story. You have to help people out with things and whatnot. Okay, so let's see here. Um, we let, Let's do this. Let's check out this um, mod where we have to manually attach things. So what we're going to do is... Uh, hook up to something. I don't know if we do we I don't know if we have to do that with the front loader. There's some things <clears throat> like combine header attachments and, and um, front loader stuff and skid steer that you don't have to do that on. I'm assuming either because there was some limitation with the mod or maybe in real life you can still do that. But let's just pull up to this. Okay, yeah, see so it no longer allows me just to magically attach this so what I have <clears throat> excuse me have to do is get out of the tractor and uh, okay so it looks like after I get out I can attach it oh that wasn't supposed to pop up uh, okay <laughs> do I just hold Q then it said do Q for a second. I, th I think, it, okay, let's try this again. It switched modes on me. I'm going to figure this out. Okay, so if I press Q, okay, there. So I essentially manually attached it. Now, you're also supposed to hold, uh, I thought I was supposed to hold Z down to attach like the hydraulic hoses and the power lines, but maybe there that doesn't apply to, to the lift. Okay, now to unattach it. Okay, so it looks like I can still unattach it from inside the vehicle. All right, this might be one of the exceptions where you can attach it from in the vehicle. Again, I don't know if that's because of a mod limitation or because that's realistic. Um but looks like it does allow you to do it. Now, what about detaching? Okay, so we can detach that. Now, what if we switch back to the front loader? Okay, so we can't detach the front loader itself from in here. Very interesting. So, ah, okay. Yeah, so we have to get out and attach it from out here. Very cool. All right. Very realistic. Let's try, uh, let's try our, our mower here because the mower is going to have a PTO. And it's also going to have, you know, some 
hydraulic hoses, I'm assuming. Okay, so we back up to here, we hop out. We attach with Q and here, let's pull it pull it out so we can get to it a little bit better. And I think we're supposed to hold Z down to attach the lines. Ah, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Very realistic. Then we can raise it, lower it. Uh, we should be able to unfold it. Yep. Okay. Very cool. All right. Now, to detach it, let's put it back in place here. Okay. So I can't do it from inside the vehicle, which is to be expected. But if I... It's kind of a, a tight spot here. If I go here and I hold Z... Okay, yep, it just unattached the lines. Awesome. And then... Q... Oh, I have to lower it first before... I, okay, that makes sense. What a very well thought out mod. I love this. Okay, now I can hit Q to unattach it. Oh, man, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So I'm making more work for myself, but I'm also making things more realistic, which is awesome. Uh, you know, that just makes you enjoy the game so much more. Okay, so cool. Uh, we have that installed. Um, the lights are now supposed to be brighter. Um, I, yeah, I can kind of tell that they're brighter now, even though it's not dark out, but that's going to help whenever if we do more of those night harvest sessions like we've done. Very cool. Um, all right, so... What do we want to do now? Looks like I've got a, a pallet over there that i got to pick up, but I'll do that in a minute. So, yeah, I think we're ready then, guys, to uh, advance to the next day. So let's do that next. And then we're going to have all this produce to sell. So we are going to... Uh, it's 8 o'clock... Oh, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. Oh, there's other things that you can do. Here, I'll, sh I'll just kind of show you what this can do. I can add, remove money, or set my money to stuff. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but we had that one contract that seemed to kind of glitch out on us in the last episode. So I, I used the power tools, which is the smaller version of this, to add, you know, the money to make up for that. So that's, you know, I would use that for those types of situations. If we want to, if we want to role play... Um, you know, paying Larry the landscaper extra money to like remove the building kind of idea, then then I can remove money to reflect that kind of a payment. Uh, there's flight mode. You know, I might do that at times to you know out out of role playing character, so to speak, to show you aerial views of you know I don't know our farm or field stuff like that. I can turn the HUD HUD off. Um, I can delete stuff. I can teleport to different places, which I won't be doing. Um, you know, as a cheat type of thing um and then there's things you know that you can do to i can turn third person on for example look at that there's og look at that man awesome so, so yeah we can actually do things in third person i uh, i don't know it's too bad there aren't any like emotes like i could wave goodbye to you guys at the end of an episode but if there is i don't know uh i don't know if that works or not but anyway that's cool uh so we can go into third person if we want to, uh, where did I do that? Here we go. Okay, so we'll turn that back off. Uh, I can run faster if I want to. On a multiplayer server, I can change ownership of farms, that kind of thing. Uh, this allows me to spawn in things like bales, pallets, um, you know, show information about what bales are on the, the farm, that kind of thing. Uh, again, I wouldn't use this uh, to cheat anything in at all, but let's say that... Let's say that due to a glitch, um, you know, we had a pile of, say, logs, and then they just kind of blew up and flew all over the place. Well, what I could do is I could I could basically uh, remove all of the logs uh, on the map and then just respawn in, you know, the amount that I had. I would use it for, you know, fixing issues like that. Uh, this is a vehicle's uh, menu, which I haven't really looked at so much. Uh, but you can change distance from vehicles, tension belts, debug, remove vehicles, that kind of thing. Placeables. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not exactly sure what this is. Oh, okay. So it looks like you can set 
yourself the owner. Oh, you know what we might be able to do with this? We might be able to actually take ownership of, a, of the farmhouse uh, back over that way that we haven't really been able to properly use. I'm not sure about that. Oh, I'll have to investigate that stuff further. Anyway, cool stuff. Makes the game more fun and more enjoyable. All right, you guys. Um, so we are going to just... We're basically... Here's the deal. We're going to take the whole day off. There's nothing else for us to do on October the 3rd. Everything's harvested. Everything's delivered. We're waiting one more day for all of our, for our produce so we can get a little bit more before we start delivering that. Oh, wait a minute. There is something we do need to do. That's right. We need to... Here, let's go into our productions. We're getting kind of low on uh, fertilizer. But I think we'll probably have enough to last until November 1st. No, wait a minute. I'm completely wrong. We're supposed to be selling stuff on the third day of the month. Okay, my bad. I forgot about that. I guess I was, I must have done all that stuff on October 2nd, and I've already uh, advanced to the third. And I should have known that because it's 8 o'clock in the morning anyways. Okay, let's change of plans. I'm glad I, I caught that before we slept. Um, so, yeah, the, the plan now is that we're going to load up our product and we're going to take it to market um so yeah let's get going on that i'm gonna we're gonna get the handy dandy forklift out we're gonna get our trailer uh set up so let's hop into here i'll have to decide where i'm gonna put the bale storage um, you know, because we don't have a ton of room on our farm. But, you know, we are going to be able to have Larry come and remove that building. But, you know, maybe we'll actually use that area for the time being. I'm not really sure yet, but we'll figure it out. Okay, so we have to back up to the trailer. Right about to there. We have to hop out and connect it and hold down Z to connect the lines. Oh, I love that. That is so cool, man. Very realistic. Very realistic. All right, well, guys, you pretty much know the drill here at this point. I'm going to uh, get to the forklift out and load the trailer up, and then we're going to take it to market. Uh, why don't we start with the lettuce, since that's going to be the fewest number of pallets, but also going to sell for the most. So I think I'm just going to shut the tractor off here. And uh, let's... Uh, well, let me get it loaded first, and then, then we'll figure out uh, where to take it to sell. All right, let's take a look at uh, where we're going to sell the lettuce. little right in the center there. Beautiful. Park you here and cut the power. Okay, so we want to go to prices and we want to go to lettuce. And it looks like Mama Joe has got the best price currently for uh, lettuce. What We are also in, what, October? Yeah, so the price is not the best that it can be, but here again, we talked about this in the last episode, how um, we don't want to... We can't realistically leave produce like this sitting around, um, you know, for a long time because it's it's going to go off, right? So uh, if we had cold storage, then we could potentially, you know, do that, but we don't. Uh, I'll keep looking for that, you know, maybe on the Mod Hub. But I haven't uh, noticed it, had seen anything that's popped out. If you guys know of a good cold storage mod, let me know in the comments. But the other the other thing about that though is even if there is a cold storage, it's probably not something we can afford right now. So you know, there's that too. But you know, this is a, a 
a renewing or reoccurring thing anyways. I mean, we can grow produce all year round, even the winter because in the winter because, you know, we're in a greenhouse, so that's the good thing about it. Okay, we're going to have to... The loading zone at Mama Joe's is a little bit janky for large trailers, but this should be good enough. <coughs> Excuse me, gazoon tight. Just got all of our loaders out here, unload our employees unloading for us. And we made $3,451 off of that. Very nice. Thank you, Mama Joe. Appreciate that. All right, let's do the maters next. And we'll do strawberries last because we're going to have the most of the strawberries. All right, guys, we have the tomatoes loaded up. Let's go ahead and park the forklift back over by the strawberries, which will be the next thing. And we'll take a look and see where we're going to go sell these. Rest of the straps hooked up here. Looks like I didn't position those too well. <laughs> um, it'd be nice if there was like little markers on the trailer to where you could see where the straps are, but it's not, you know, it's not consistent. So anyway, even though it visibly is not strapped down, it is. Once you strap these, it, it secures everything. So, all right. Let's go into the menu and take a look at uh, tomatoes. So let's see, four ninety three. Looks like Johnson's or the Grocery Mart are giving the same exact price at the top of the hour for that. And of course, the Grocery Mart is much closer. So let's go ahead and deliver to them. We'll just go out the back way here. You know, we haven't actually eaten anything for a bit this morning. I think we're going to stop off and order ourselves a cool tractor ice cream. Om nom 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 tasty tasty. Okay, there's nothing else I can inter no other way I can interact with that, so we'll just have to use our imaginations there. <laughs> actually, an ice cream bar sounds good right now. Okay, so yeah. Back to this lovely place. Here we go. Take all those tomatoes, grocery store. $3,207. All right. Nice. I don't know if I've told you guys this, but the prices change at the top of the hour. So, um, I, and I think, yeah, well, no, I guess we haven't, it's still 8 o'clock. Oh, well, 8.42, I should say. So, I guess they ha haven't changed since we started, but not sure if I can get all these strawberries loaded before 9 a.m. Not that it matters. I mean, we got to load them anyways, and then we'll just see, you know, what, what they're doing at that point in time. And keep in mind, again, there's a lot more strawberries there than what we see, too. So, okay, let's get started with strawberry loading. All right, look at this big old load of strawberries. This is awesome, man. That's three days worth of strawberries in our greenhouses, our greenhouse. Well, actually, we. There are two greenhouses per building. Uh, had a lot of weirdness again with the trailer drifting. That's why it's all kind of jackknifed to the side there a little bit. Um, and also contributed to some of these pallets not being perfectly straight, but I guess it's good enough. Okay, so I think we are finished with the forklift for this uh, go around. I got to thinking that um, we might want to 
we could add another greenhouse in because as it turns out it's just plain easier for me you know to to get to these from the long end um even even though i do have room you know to get them from the other end and so you know we could add we could actually probably even add two more if we wanted to uh, so we could put in like another lettuce it, it, if we only added one more i'd put in another lettuce because lettuce takes the longest and it also but it also brings in the most money and then if we did two more i'd probably do a lettuce and another tomato the strawberries just grow like crazy so one one uh, building of strawberries is plenty uh but anyway the you know the downside to that of course is well it's, it's ten thousand dollars for another greenhouse a and b you know then the cost for the extra fertilizer now it would definitely be worth it it's just again a matter of is that something i want to do right now and i don't know the answer to that question i'll have to give it some thought so Okay, so anyway, let's get our forklift parked in its spot. I really love this forklift, man. It's just awesome. Make sure the forks are down and got the power. And we still, if you look at my battery gauge in the lower right-hand corner, I mean, we're st <laughs> we haven't even gotten down to 90% yet, so this thing lasts a long time power-wise, which is great. Okay, let's find out who is going to give us the best price for the strawberries. It did roll uh, around to 9 a.m. It's 9.13, so the prices have changed. Uh, so let's check those out for strawberries. Strawberries are here. Okay, so it looks like the bowling restaurant has the best price at the moment. Man, okay, so they must have changed from BLT night to strawberry shortcake night. <laughs> or maybe they're doing strawberry cheesecake night. I don't know. Hey, wait a second. Why does that palette of strawberries look different than the rest? It's lighter in color, isn't that weird? How bizarre. I don't know. It's just it's just that one palette. I have no idea why that's going on. All right, anyways, I'll see you guys up at the bowling restaurant. All right, let's see how we do. Three thousand two hundred twenty-eight dollars. All right. So let's. Uh, I don't know why. It does that weird thing with the straps? Cut it out. Okay. Uh, let's see what we ended up with then for selling our product here in August. So let's see. Sold products. All right. So we made. Uh, basically made. It's, it's basically what I figured we would make. Close to ten grand. Uh. Because in September, we only sold two days worth of product, and it was around six. And then in October, we sold three days worth of product, and it's almost actually 10. But, you know, that that's also affected by the price, too. So, you know, the price is supposed to be going up as we get later in the year. Uh, and we're, we're still in October, so, um, you know, we sh we'll see even better numbers through November, December, and January, and then in February, you know, it'll start to drop down again. And that trend is pretty much the same for all of the three produce items here. So January is when is going to be a good month where, you know, we're going to make a lot of money in January off of this stuff, but not too bad, you know, uh, 10 grand for three days uh, worth of produce with the pricing on its way up. Can't complain about that. However, we now need to, uh, get fertilizer so that's you know that's gonna of course affect the uh, the, the bottom line but it is what we got to do in order to do business so let's go ahead and you know what we'll do too let's go back to the farm and I'm gonna try this new store delivery system out and uh, you know just kind of see how that works Okay, so we have to get out of our vehicle, and we have to disconnect the hoses, and then disconnect the trailer. Love it. Absolutely love it. Very realistic. I don't know if I'm going to keep my roller there permanently. That's just kind of where I have it right at the moment. Okay, so it seems to make the most sense to have deliveries on our property. 
probably occur right out here. Um, so I think what we'll do, I mean, I don't know if it matters which direction I'm facing, but let's try to see if that says anything. Okay. So if we go to left shift and left alt, there we go. Okay. So that, that shows us where we want it delivered. Uh, you know, anything coming from the store. So left shift, left alt, and I think we press S to set it. Okay. I, yeah, I, I think that's right. And then I think we would press R to remove it. So let's go with that. All right. Now, we're essentially going to either go online... Uh, on our smartphone or just call the store and order some uh, some fertilizer. Uh, so I think, yeah, let's just give the store a call. Yes, hello. Is this uh, Sam at the uh, store supply? Hi, Sam. How are you doing? Yeah, I was wondering if you could uh, deliver... Uh, three pallets of liquid fertilizer uh, to my farm over here uh, on, on the Elm Creek farm. And, uh, yeah, just deliver them and drop them off, you know, just right in, in front of the the uh, greenhouses there. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate it. And, okay, sounds good. We'll see you in just a little bit. All right, so Sam, the, st <laughs> the, Sam, the store supplier, uh, I just made that shit up. <laughs> It's going to uh, deliver that for us. Okay, so now I think all we have to do is just go into the store menu uh, and we go to uh, pallets and we order three. Oh, that's right. We can't order three of these at a time. Why isn't that? That just seems so odd. All right. Well, I guess we'll have to buy them three at a time. Now, here's the thing to keep in mind. Um, each one of these pallets is going to cost $3,200. So that, so that means we need a minimum of three, right? And that's $9,600. That's almost all of the money that we made this month for the produce. And we still have to uh, we still have to do the water, too, which isn't going to cost anything, but it's going to cost time. So, okay. So I guess the question is, how long does a pallet of fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, last? Before I actually do this, let's go back into our production menu. And the, the, what is this one? Uh, okay, so the strawberries and the tomatoes have used a lot more fertilizer than the lettuce. So the lettuce fertilizer, it, I guess that ha is because the lettuce takes longer to grow. Um, that has to be it because the lettuce also has a higher ratio of water to fertilizer. I, well, I think if I'm interpreting that correctly, but it takes a lot longer to grow. So I guess really the question here that we have to answer for ourselves is um, how long does a pallet fertilizer last? It does last more than a month. If we look at our, our pricing here for sold products, we started selling products in August. So it looks to me like for the strawberries and the tomatoes, we can expect one pallet of liquid fertilizer to last for approximately three months. Okay, so if we, you know, I'm just going to kind of round the numbers a little bit. Let's, let's just say that we make $9,000 because remember, we can't really use these numbers here. Uh, because I, I, I didn't sell them on a three-day cycle. So... Let's just use nine thousand dollars as our, you know, our point here of reference. Okay, so that means twenty-seven thousand uh, dollars for three months is what we're gonna make. 
and then we have to subtract uh, what is it? Nine six from that for three pallets of fertilizer per greenhouse per for every three for every three month period. I hope you guys are following along with me. I know I'm probably okay. So that's still that still gives us a, a profit of seventeen thousand four hundred dollars over a three month period. Sands, you know, the the time to do the water. But again, the water doesn't cost any money. It just costs time, which. You know, we it's at least at this point in time in our career here, we still have a decent amount of downtime towards the end of the month for me to do that. So, uh, yeah, it still looks like it's profitable. But what we want to actually compare that to, though, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, is, okay, so we have $27,000 minus $9,600. Okay, so so basically over a three-month period, we make $17,400 with these greenhouses. Now, if we didn't use the modded greenhouses, we just use the vanilla ones, it's not gonna cost us anything except for here, again, the water. But we also have to cut the price in half. So in that case, we should assume about $4,500 per month times three is 13.5. Okay, so again, these numbers aren't perfectly accurate mathematically speaking but i think they're somewhat within the ballpark so if we did the vanilla houses uh greenhouses and we expected around forty five hundred dollars um per month and we didn't have to put any other money into it we're still only making thirteen thousand five hundred in a three-month period whereas we're making seventeen thousand and change with the modded in a three-month period so it's worth it um okay that's assuming again um that we can go three months on one pallet of fertilizer, which I think we more or less can. We definitely can with the lettuce um, and and then some. So because we can with the lettuce, you know, that, that'll actually balance that out a little bit more. So in other words, what I'm saying is if the strawberries and tomatoes use just slightly more than one pallet of fertilizer per month, this is going to use, I would say, significantly less. So, you know, we could even be making more money off of that than I figured. So I think it's worth it. I think it's worth it. Um, you guys, let me know. You know if if I screwed something up with the with those estimations, but it seems to me like it is definitely worth it to use these modded greenhouses, taking all of that into account. All right. So that being said, let's go into pallets. Let's go to liquid fertilizer. We're going to buy one of these now. Notice that uh, this costs thirty two hundred bucks, but we're also there's also going to be a delivery fee associated with this. And I don't know if it's going to tell us directly what that is, but what I'm going to do in case it doesn't is I'm going to put 116, 135 uh, in my calculator. Okay, now let's buy this. And there we go. Oh, it does tell us the delivery cost. Oh, it's okay, so it's 2.5%. Interesting, 2.5%. So that costs us $82.00 to have that to delivered to us. So it's going to cost us 166 no, $246 to have 3 pallets delivered versus me ordering them at the shop and then taking the tanker down there and loading the 3 up and driving the tanker back. So, I mean, eh, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's, uh, uh, it's for something like this, I don't know, it seems my, that might be a little bit expensive, but let's go ahead and just do it for this time around, and, uh, and I'll, have to, I'll have to decide if that's really cost effective or not. Uh, but let's buy two more. And, you know, I know I don't have to buy one for the lettuce, but what I'm going to do with the lettuce is I'm just going to keep buying three per month and keep filling up the lettuce. And then any extra that we get, we can dump into, you know, the strawberries or the tomatoes until the green, the lettuce stays full for quite some time. Uh, again, I'm just trying to get a feel for, uh, you know, for what the actual consumption is. Very cool. Now we want to go over here to our fertilizer trailer, which I think is the this one here. Yeah, that's the fertilizer trailer. All right, 
pop out. There's no lines or anything, I think, to hook up here, right? Well, there should be there should be wires to hook up, but I don't. Yeah, maybe they're in the. Oh yeah, there are lines that hooked up. Okay, yeah, that, that that's the wires for the lights. Cool. Okay. Now we'll go fill up the tank here. That's the R key. I suppose the way you would do this in real life, it looks like there's a an outlet there. You probably have to hook a pump or something like that up to it. Okay. Now we'll hit the uh, tomatoes first. All right, let's look at something here. So, yeah, so the tomatoes have uh, quite a bit of fertilizer in them now. You know, one thing we could do, actually, maybe we should fill them all completely full, and then we can just track it, you know, from, from November on until it essentially runs all the way out and see what the actual time it is for each type of greenhouse to uh, run out of fertilizer. Because I might have I might have underestimated our profit on that. Now that I think about it, even if I did though, it still shows that the comparison between the vanilla and the modern the, the modern are still going to make you more money when it's all said and done. Maybe we'll do that though, just just to get a little bit more accurate idea of the difference between the vanillas and the modded greenhouses. I mean, it's even possible that we might have enough fertilizer to top them all off because the lettuce has quite a bit left in it still. All right, so that was strawberries. And yeah, it's, it's pretty full too. Okay, so let's do the lettuce. And then I, I don't... I probably won't have enough to fill all three of them, so we might have to buy one more, but that's okay. So, yeah, I guess we just have to assume we have some kind of a pump that we're hooking up uh, and pumping that fertilizer up into the, the tank. Or, you know, what we, you know what we could do to roleplay this a little more realistically? I could lift the pallet up on the forklift and put the nozzle over the opening and then do it that way. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll do that. I don't know, we'll see. How we would do this is we would definitely have to imagine that we have a pump. Um, I just don't see any other way that would happen. Uh, or maybe there's a hose. Actually, is there a hose on the trailer? There might be like a hose or something that you could hook up for that. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's go ahead and load up the lettuce. Okay, so that gets the lettuce completely full. Let's just drop the rest of this in here, and then we're going to have to get one more pallet to fill everything up. Uh, so let's do that now. Yeah, so the nozzle's on that side. So what we could do is grab the fork. Well, actually, I don't know. Will the forklift lift it that high? Let's see. <laughs> it should, actually, now that I think about it. Let's also uh, 
uh, widen our forks a bit here. And we're going to maybe need, well, no, let's just, yeah, let's go in all the way. Okay, so now we do have the nozzle there, right? Okay, so what we basically do is we take this and line it up to here. Oh, crap, that's the highest it goes, huh? Uh, all right, well, I, that's all I can do at this point, so... Maybe later on, you know, we'll have a telehandler or a front loader or something that can lift that higher. But for now, we'll just... You know, we'll have to just go back to pretending we have a pump to get it up in there because this obviously... <laughs> It's not going to work. Okay, well, it was worth a try anyway. Okay, so let's get uh, the tomatoes filled. And uh, I think we'll have enough to do the tomatoes and strawberries. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's already full. Nice. In fact, it looks like we're going to have a little bit uh, of fertilizer left over, too, which is fine. That's not a problem at all. Let's just use it next time. Yep, we have a little bit left over. Cool. Okay, so all of the... Uh, Greenhouses are now completely full with fertilizer, and we will um, we'll keep an eye on that, and we'll see how long it lasts. And you know, once we kind of know how long it lasts, we'll be able to do a little bit more accurate calculation of you know how much profit we're actually making off of these greenhouses. Cool. Okay, so I don't see any reason to offload the fertilizer out of this tank. I think we're just going to keep it in here. Might as well. So let's park it in its usual spot here. Pop out, disconnect the wires, and disconnect the hitch. I love it. All right, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and I think we're going to wrap up the episode here. I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go fill all of these up with water. So we'll get that taken care of. Uh, and I'll do that, of course, off camera. And then in tomorrow's episode, it'll be November 1st and we should be able to harvest all of our hay. Um, and we're going to, of course, turn that into silage. And then we might also... Um, at that point, look at maybe purchasing uh, one of those hay storage units. Because we're going to store our silage until, you know, until January. And, and, and I know we could just keep the silage anywhere we wanted to, but, you know, this is going to be a permanent thing. It's not just going to be this one time. So we might as well, you know, get some hay storage going. Uh you know, from the get-go. Okay. So thank you everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment to share the video and we will catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Let's go get some water. <laughs>